Wrong button. Hello, world. You would think I would know that it's the first button. Like, it's it's the first button. That's how we get there. This this is thanks. This is hello. So, hello, world. I like this little uh, this little stream deck thing. It's pretty cool. I uh, only have, like, half the buttons set up. Um, there's other stuff I can do with it. I can jump tracks, though. I built that one. Um, I think I posted about that. I'm not actually sure. Let's look. Uh, did I put that up? Testing. No, I don't. Doesn't look like I did. Huh? Because I don't think it's in my. I don't think I would have put that in the journal. Who knows? Um, I will post that at some other point. Anyways, uh, yeah. Welcome to the stream. Um, hope you're having a good evening. Uh, or if you're watching the VOD, I hope you're having a good whatever time of day it is. Um, I think my uh, traditional... Oh, I've got some actual Sprite here. So I'm going to have some of that. It's delicious. But many calories. Um, so what are we doing tonight? So last night... Or what are we doing this stream? I shouldn't like say it's night because there's going to be like VOD stuff, right? So what are we doing this time? Well, we'll start with last time. What we did is we set up this URL grabber. And this URL grabber, let me give it a couple things to go to. Um, Example.com, exorcism.com, or exor, exorcism. Yeah, yeah, the exercise site. I need to dig more into this. Uh, I saw it a long time ago. I met uh, Katrina Owen Owens. Can't remember which, um, who started it, uh, and it looks like it's doing awesome. So um, it shows you these little coding tricks or coding exercises to go through, and then practice. But then also you can get help learning them, and you can look and see what other people did. It's really it's neat. Sites changed hugely since the last time I saw it, um, which is awesome. Uh, here we go to nature. I actually don't know. I don't have that many sites actually on my thing. Oh, we can go to Yale, Alabama. Anyways, what this little script does, we're gonna go to toolkit, we're gonna go to URL archiver. Um, we're gonna remove this link details file because I actually wanna see if this works. So uh, archive URLs. Oh, is it just printed straight out? Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We haven't finished it up. So what it's doing is it's looping through all of my Safari windows and through each one, of, which I think I've only got one open now, but it loops through all the windows. And then as it loops through all the windows, it loops through all the tabs on all the windows. For each tab, it grabs the URL and the title of the page and sucks that data out and then uh, dedupes it um, and then makes it uh, or formats it to Markdown. Um, so you can see right here. And so basically what this lets me do, uh, we've got this open right now. So links from the stream. If we go back here and look at this, it just, uh, uh, oh, I should put dashes in there. Aha, to do, put dashes in. Um, but it gives me all the links for the stream. Um, and here's a, let me find one, live coding. So it makes these. Wow, that's a very long title. I didn't look at that. I should fix that. Um, hey, live on the air. But so here's getting started with that one that apparently is open somewhere. I don't know. Uh, Python to pin string Google, Python add string to another. Live coding, stream notes. Here's the Alabama. Oh, it must have picked stuff up from the archive. I don't know. Um, but so the idea behind this script is I want to be able to run it multiple times a day, every day, and just collect the collection of links that I see basically all day. Um, and you can set the frequency of that to you know try and capture every page that I ever hit. Um, but I think I'm just gonna do it like once every 15 minutes 
and that'll probably give me a close enough indication of what I'm in. But like, it's possible because of the sampling rate that the thing will have fired. I'll open a page and I'll close the page and then it fires again. So that would be invisible to the system. Um, but like, so what? Uh, I could fire it off more often, but like I, that 15, maybe, maybe 10 minutes. Um, well, hell, maybe five, who knows? Um, but I want to do that every day and then basically make a collection of links that I'll post to the blog of like, here's all the stuff that I looked at yesterday because we'll do it at the end of the day and roll over. Um, so I've got a few things that I want to do with the, with the script now. Um, so we should actually, what's a good place to do this? To do add dashes to make uh, markdown lists, I think. Um, oh, look, it markdownifies over here. That's cool. Um, PyCharm continues to impress. Uh, store each day's data in independent files. Because what it does is there should be a JSON sitting around here somewhere. Current data JSON. So this current data JSON is what stores the data between runs. Um, it's also what I use to do the deduplication of the URLs uh, between every run. Um, so if I've got one URL that stays open across five different runs, I don't want five instances of it. So the way the script works is uh, it starts with a, with a JSON object or it starts with an empty object. Um, it loads this JSON. Oh, that's gonna be something I need to do is deal with the first run of a day when a JSON isn't in there. Um, so it pulls in this JSON and the JSON may or may not have links in there, turns that into an object. It grabs all the other URLs uh, and titles from the existing set and it just pushes those on, over on top. So the keys uh, if for a URL would be the same key and the value is almost certainly the same thing for a title, but changes, I don't really care about that. Um, and then you, and then so you, this JSON object then goes back or this object then gets stored back as JSON. So that in between runs, that's the, the data store. Um, and then obviously it, um, it outputs the markdown as well. Um, so that's what it's doing. And, and right now it's in a state where, um, of URLs. So what have I got? So, uh, I built this as a class. So we make an instance of URL archiver. Um, we load the JSON data, which is currently pulling from current URL. Uh, current data JSON. Uh, we get the OSA script string. That's this Apple script, which is the mechanism that actually goes out and grabs all the URLs and all the titles from all the tabs and then loads it back in just as a string. So it's just a one move to grab it. Um, and then we update the object from OSA string. So we've got all this data that we came back in and then we go through and we update the object by putting in the keys and the values into the main object that would overlay um, or, or supplement or overlay the, the object that came in from the, the JSON data. Then the order of operations right now is I save the JSON back out um, and then I take the object and make all the markdown elements from it. And right now I'm just printing that out. So, uh, cause it goes, when you make the markdown ob object or the markdown string, I don't actually output at that point, right? So I've, I want this kind of separation of concerns where I can build the string, I can build the individual objects, um, but then I can go do something with that later. Like I don't have to, uh, I'm trying to avoid testing the file system. So I wanted to make sure that like I, I could test the string itself, and then the next step will be to save it out. So, um, but so that's that's where we are. That's what's going on, and now we can kind of get started with that as the history. Um, the so the f and I, I'm doing uh, test driven stuff on this. Um, 
solidly. So the first thing I want to do is make a little bit of a change here. So this expected, so, oh, do I not have, that's interesting. Huh, hang on a second. So load JSON data, make our markdown from object data. Oh yeah, yeah, so I don't, I just do that all as one run. Yeah, so I could push this, I could actually split this off a little bit more because uh, I'm doing the for loop and then I'm doing processing inside the for loop where what I could do is, that makes it a little harder to test because the, ex the expected value that I'm getting back from this test has to have two lines in order to do this check. I wonder if I want to split that off. Would that make it, that would make it more something-ish. Um, Cause really all, well, really all it's doing is doing that format. Self empty string. Yeah, so I'm adding that into it. Um, Cause it's, I don't know what I'm trying to describe here, but there's a little bit of a thing where it almost feels like the assembly. Well, so you could clearly you could make the assembly of the individual string its own thing, and then do the. Um, yeah, I actually do want to do that. I think that's going to make it more like. This is like this is fine. This would work, but I'm interested in refining the precision of the tests as much as possible, and and getting getting kind of the atomic level of the test. And right now, this is testing two things because I'm I'm testing. I'm actually not I'm not directly testing the assembly of the string. I'm a test. I'm a testing the assembly of the string plus the aggregation of all the strings together. Um, which I don't like. Yeah, it's fine, but this is this is just, I'm practicing going through this. I'm treating this like, um, like a martial arts basics practice or like scales in, for a musician where this isn't the most complicated thing and I could very easily make this go, but it's like, I want to, I want to really get it. So we're gonna do it a little differently. Um, and that practice will help when it's, when I'm working with more complicated stuff. So we're gonna do this. Uh, PT. Semicolon gives me my expander for that. So test build markdown link. Just passing, good, okay, of course it is. So what we wanna have, oh yeah, we're actually gonna wanna well, let's see if we can keep this test in until things change. Um, because what we want to have is, whoops, I didn't click over very well. We want to have this, but we want to make it a markdown list. So there's that. And then we're just going to copy this directly. So first we make it fail to make sure the test is live. And then we're going to make it pass by doing uh, the Sandy Metz shameless green. Cool. And now we're gonna do, so let's do this. UA uh, uh, actual equals, whoops. UA dot build markdown link. And we're gonna pass it a thing. Oh, no, we're not. Um, or we're just gonna do this to start simple steps. So it fails because that doesn't exist. So now we're gonna make it exist. Uh, 
return string equals something return return string. Why is that angry? There we go. So this is still going to fail because we need to send this back. Whoops. Did I do that right? Yeah. And now we should be green again. Uh oh. Not if we do that. Oops. Warming up. Here's green. Okay. So now we can get rid of this and we can do the work to actually make this happen. So in order to make that go, the thing that we're going to pass to it is um, uh, URL equals this title equals, we'll put this one in quotes. Does this work? Oh, it does. Nice. So URL equals URL, title, title, T-I-T-L-E. And this is going to bomb because the arguments are freaking it out. So we want to be really explicit and get URL and get title. We're green again. Now I can do a little work. Uh, so return string format title URL. Whoops. All right, so if we comment this out, are we still green? We're still green. All right, so there's a little builder. Again, it's super simple, but like that is a method that does a thing. Um, and I was looking last night at some of the other Sandy Metz rules of engagement. And one of the things she was talking about is like method shouldn't be any longer than five lines. It's like, cool, I can appreciate that. Those two. And the one that we we're just messing with, like, that doesn't really count as a line, right? So the it's one, two, two lines. Um, but it's still it's doing this work as, as well as doing the assembly. And so you can't really check this work directly, but now we can. Um, and now we are. Oh, also, we only really need one there. So three tests passed. Uh, and now what we want to do is, so I'm going to take this test out of play. Cause this is, this is really kind of a, uh, an integration test. Right. Cause we're, we're seeing kind of the full assembly of um, of all the, all the data. So what I'm going to do, I'm trying to figure out. So I, I really like this, this methodology of staying one undo away from green. And so and then not doing too much. And like, how would you test? Well, I guess we could just make a new one. Um, So I'm just going to dupe all this. Comment it out. So this is it. And we're going to make this. Oh, how do we stay one undo away from green? See, this is the exercise, right? This is to see if we can do it. Um, so one, we're still green right now, right? Right. Oh, 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 okay. So hang on. So the way that we can do this is this is going to be weird. Um, so I'm going to make, I'm going to duplicate this. 
and call it self. But with the name old, old, and rename this. <clears throat> is this the right way to do this? This is backwards. This is backwards, 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 backwards. Undo, undo, undo. Is it still green? I feel like I broke something right there. Okay. Sort object, self object of a key, key. Oh, oh, okay, I see what's going on. Uh, I just had that down there, got it. So I take it back. We're gonna leave this one in place. But we're gonna build a new one. And we actually are gonna go, go ahead and build it. Um, Expected actual expected actual. I've got a hot key for that, but didn't use it. Okay, so that's the test. And so our expected is going to be this, but with this. And now, am I really? So here's the question. This is just testing a for loop. Like this is just testing Python. I don't think we need this test because I want to test the assembly. I want to make sure this works right. But I don't need to, yeah, this is, this is just testing Python. Like this is testing if for the for loop works and then adding a new line to it. Yeah, we don't need to test that. So we're gonna drop that. And we're gonna drop this. And then this'll just be, well, I guess you could have an integration test. Yeah, okay, it's an integration test. We'll keep an integration test. That's fine. Now how do we do that one step away from green? Uh, well, I guess the easiest way would be to do this one step. Expected actual. So we can just do that to bail on it for a minute. What's this gonna return? Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. If you call it twice, it double loads it. We don't really need to worry about that, but we could worry about that if we wanted to. I'm just trying to figure out how we would want to make this move and do it one step away from green. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it the other way. So this should still pass. Yep. We're gonna do it this way. Def uh, test migration MDV2. Let's do this. PT. Whoops. PT. It's just faster. Migration MDV2. Right. So everybody's good. Everybody's happy. Everybody's green. 
So expected. This time we'll have these and these. And it's gonna explode, which we want. That's good. Verifies the test is working. We do this, we do it again, it's green. Now we can do this. Uh, actually, what are we gonna wanna do? We're gonna wanna run this V2. Yeah, this is the right way to do it. Cause that's not there, but now we can make Oops. So the return value, oh yeah. We're not doing the, we're not loading the return value yet. We're just doing it, that's fine. Now we do actual equals UA dot UA dot MD string. And now it should explode because those things aren't the same, but then we can make them the same. And if we run it, we should be, oh, not green. Why are we not green? Warning, your QB is low. How much do we need to worry about that? 35 gigs, I think we're okay. Uh, oh, 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 it doesn't return. It doesn't return, doesn't return, it makes uh, it does this. Now, there we go, green again. So this is our integration test. And now we can get rid of this. So we need to send it the data. Yeah, we need to send it this. So this is where it feels like that should happen up above for some reason. Like that's the prep data. Let's see if we like this. So there's our links, there's our expected. Yeah, this is kind of gross too, right? Um, all right, what that's gonna do. So we're green. So it's going on the object data, right? Cause we're not doing anything other than just doing this. So here's where we do four item in self uh where is it See, this is weird when you're not passing stuff in well i guess you could pass it in that makes more sense right you actually want to you actually want to pass the data in even though it's in an instance variable. So it can update it, that's fine, but that way you're explicitly sending stuff in. You're not having to rely on the state of it. I like that, okay. So backing off this for a second. Whoops, I ran it. I guess that's a reason you wouldn't want to actually be in your, you should have a main instead of this. All right. So what we're gonna do is what? So here's our V2. Yeah, instead of setting the data, we're just gonna pass it here uh, by name, which is data object. I 
Object data, data object. Object data. So what we use in other places, we will continue to use it here. Why is that yellow? Maybe because this is fried. I don't know what's going on. Get angry. Unexpected. Oh, because it needs to be in quotes, perhaps. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. Now everything's angry. What's going on? Bailing out, bailing out, bailing out, bailing out. Undo back to the beginning of time. Green, okay. Now why, oh why? Why can't we set that? No. So you don't quote the names, right? When you first put them in, I'm forgetting the syntax. I don't think you do. For green, right? Okay. Complain about the arguments, right? Unexpected keyword. Yeah, okay. So Object data. Unexpected keyword argument. Okay, that's right. Green, okay. I don't know what's going on. Why is that all weird yellow a minute ago? So now we should be able to put this in, right? Does that work? Okay. So actual equals ua.md string. Get rid of this. I still don't like this. I, again, I don't like this. All right, I'm gonna try taking it out one more time. See what happens in my head this time. Oh, okay, I guess I do want it, right? Because it's, I need to do the assembly. Like, I need to know how to do the assembly. Um, so we've got that. We've got our object data for 
item in object data print item. I'm too tired to use a debugger. Which of those? Oh, you would just send it. So here, yeah, this is why it's integration, right? It's because we take a build link. I'm just gonna do item item for a second. Test failed. Bulk MD itself. Still test failed. I need that to go away so I can see what's going on. Takes one positional argument, that three were given. Huh? Oh, wait a minute. URL, URL, URL. Right? Passed. Title is object data with that. It should be those. That should be this, this, this. So this should be green because we're still overriding it. But now if we do this, hopefully. Wah -wah. Quickly see the difference. Expected has two lines, that only has one. Why did that only have one? For item and object data, print. Item. So it's printing both of them out. Markdown string plus equals. Uh, it is confusing. It is very confusing. Oh, wait a minute. I see what's happening. It's over there. I gotcha. Yay, integration test. Okay. Prove it's worth. Uh, so really what we need is... That. Which will bring it down a line so we can see what's going on. Is that going to work? There's our green. Yeah, so you could return the new line. And I do kind of want to do the new line because I kind of don't want... Uh, what's my thing there? Uh, wait, I'll be right back. Where did... That's not it. Of course it goes to Photoshop. If I was smart, I would make this a screen. Be right back.
Yeah, I need to make that like a actual screen that I can use uh, and throw up there. Uh, it'll be fine for now though. How do we make it go away? There we go. It needs to disappear a little bit though. There you go. Okay, so the question is how... So we're green. <clears throat> Excuse me, let's see if we can run all the tests. All the tests, good. So let's do a little cleanup. Well, I guess for the integration test, really what you could do is just have data in a file and send it to it. I don't know, just a, the integration test, that, that test feels weird for some reason. Um, I want to look through these again for a second, but it's test build MD link. Okay, that one we like. Integration mark two we like. Integration object data. This one goes away. And so does this one. Which is gonna make this, where'd it go? Was there actual script? Yeah, it's gonna make that yell. That's okay for now. Now we can leave V2 here. Yeah, just for fun. What happens if we run it? Do we get it? Object data. Ah, you gotta pass stuff to it. That's fine. Yeah, I really like, I do like passing the data into it. I don't know if that's like where you're supposed to do or if you're supposed to bounce off, but I like the explicitness of it. Plus it makes it easier to test because you can fire stuff into it without having to set up an object. Um, yeah, I like that. Uh, oh yeah, so we gotta send object data to V2. Yeah, see, really, the integration test should be here. Because really what I want to do is make sure that all this stuff works. Well, but you could test that other thing, too. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Um, but made from V2. So we got to pass object data to that. And object data is this object data. A lot of voter stuff going on, which is UA object data. Is that gonna work? Nope. Oh, yeah, we call it object data. There we go. Do just a little more cleanup. Uh, okay, so let's do this. Where's my Git stuff? I don't understand why sometimes the Git doesn't show up. So the other thing I'm trying to think about is storage um, and how and where to store this stuff and how to test the storage of it. Um, that may be an exercise for another time, but so there's the exp 
expected. That's the object. Update object from OSA script. Yeah, see this sets... That sets it, and I kind of want to pass it. I don't know, I need more experience going back and forth between those two things. Um, but let's just make some progress here. Uh, so we saved our JSON out, so if we look at current JSON, we'll see all this good stuff. So that'll just keep growing. Um, as we continue to fire more stuff at it. And it, does it sort? E, S, no, K, S, E. Okay. So, where do we put a sort in? Um, and I'm not really gonna test the sort, cause like, that's kind of testing Python. Actually, let me look through these tests for a minute. So expected equals that, make object from data, object data. Okay, I like this because we're passing something explicitly to it, which is the test that we just made. Yeah, and that updates. And I can't remember, there's, there's like two things that methods can do. It's like in return something or modify something. I can't remember what it is. Um, and you don't want to do both. But this, yeah, this sets, this is a setter. Um, and then we get it. That's cool. And here, yeah, we build a link. I like that. But see, in this, it requires us setting the string. I want to change this. Because there's not really any difference, right? You're still, it's still got to go get, I mean, the data is just sitting there. It shouldn't, I don't know if that actually adds overhead or not. Um, to pass something into it, even if it's already in there. It probably does a little bit, but like, computers are fast. So. So this is gonna bomb. All right, how do we do this one step away from green? We gotta make a new, we gotta make a new one. Yeah, and this, this relies on there being a new object, but that's okay. Um, test set object data from OSA script string. Is it not saying, oh, no tests were found. What? Something's funky. Oh, got to pass. There we go. So what we're looking for is This is the object data. Right, okay, gotcha. So just prove the test fails, test fails. Oh, wrong. All these weirdnesses. 
Test passes. Okay. And then what we want to do... So actual equals, yeah, we don't want to have to set we don't have to set something and then run it. We want to pass directly to it. What do we call it? Set. So this is going to fail because it ain't there. And what we're going to set it is OSA script string equals that for now, just to make it easier for us to deal with. So this is going to blow up because the method doesn't exist. right because that doesn't do anything right now uh, actual is going to be ua dot object data that's what we're grabbing and that's going to blow up because we need to set this this passes okay there we go so now we just make that happen for real Here, oops. So I kind of like prep expected results. I used to like that. I don't know if I still do. Yeah, I still think you want. that uh, whatever does it work it works okay so now we're in there now we can do this for real which I'm just gonna grab the logic from the other one which was this so I'm gonna run that oops Wrong way. Run that. Test passes. Run this. All right, okay, we're passing. And now if we check this out, still passing. Okay, so get rid of that. Yeah, I like this where we're explicitly passing the stuff to it, um, passing it around instead of going and grabbing it. I don't know. That just feels more like I've got a better sense of what happening is because there's a there's a a method sitting out there and I know what I'm putting into it instead of putting something somewhere else, having it go grab data and then doing something and then doing something somewhere else. Like it's it's a more direct path. Like I tell it a thing, it goes and does the thing. 
Um, yeah, I like that. Set object data from us a... Oh, but we're not actually... We weren't actually using it. Try now. Whoops. Okay, there we go. Now we're actually using it. Yeah, and like you could theoretically split on the lines and then split here or do whatever, but like this is this is enough. Um I like that. Okay. I'm also digging just the like whoosh, whoosh, whoosh of these. There's not a lot of back and forth. I'm really liking that pattern actually a lot. Um And this is one where I'm I keep going back and forth between do you do you just put this down here as the return string? But I kinda I really like um, especially if we name it explicitly. That's a gross one. Yeah, you could keep, like, you could pull this out of the chain, but, like, it's still, it's whatever. Um, Load JSON, make markdown, update. So this one we can actually get rid of, right? Because that's what we just replaced. So that should kill a test. It should be this one. Oops. Uh oh. Oh God. Wait. Passing, okay. What the hell happened? Can you not move that? Yeah, he moved that, okay. Test failed. How can it fail when I'm taking out a test? That's a bad sign. What? Okay. What's going on? understand what's happening. Oh, there is a failing test. It just wasn't running all the test. Man, I hate that. <sighs> Crap, and now I don't know where it was. That's frustrating. Actually, I think I saw where it was, but... 
I wish it would run all the tests when I'm running all the tests. It's like sometimes it decides to run one, sometimes it's four. That was frustrating. All right, can we kill this yet? And then, where's the one we're gonna kill? This one, right? Cool. Uh, sweet. And our git's still not there, don't know why. Do it on the command line, all good. Okay, so that's in pretty good shape. That was basically just a whole bunch of refactoring, but that's cool. Again, this is like practice, or this is practicing. Everything's practice, so kind of right. I feel like I already opened one of those. Oh, no, I didn't, because I still have spread over there. water with a little bit of Sprite flavor over there is what I have. All right, so what do we want to do now? Add dashes to the markdown list. Got that. Deal with first day run. And then, so we can kind of do these at the same time. So, um, Let's see. This is where I'm not sure what the best, like how to set up to have it testing and to do kind of, so on the same machine, do your testing separation between or your separation of concerns, basically. Because, um, like, you could throw a dev flag on it. Um, like, I guess we could be running it from here. And then call the main so that, like, this would get its own thing. Um, but I'm not sure. Uh... So the first thing I guess I want to do is figure out where I want to store the data, right? So we need... All right, I'm thinking too many steps ahead. So what we need is a data storage directory. Well, I guess we could actually do it straight TDD, right? Or should that be, yeah, so def test set data storage, -er. right? And this is, mm, okay, I mean, it's a thing, so we'll do it.
But then you get into the file system stuff. Because where, I mean, so the start is, what do I want the storage directory to be? Because I want it, I think I want it year and month. Yeah, so you'd want to have... data storage base stir, right? No, okay, let's try, let's get it all the way there. So let, set storage stir, right? So we were gonna want, let's just start with something. Um, Twenty uh, data, 2020, 10, and actually let's do 20, 1909 SCP. And actually, let's run to make sure it fails. Good. Okay, paste. Pass. And then actual equals ua dot data storage -der. so that's gonna bomb because that doesn't exist now it's gonna bomb because it's the wrong path Now it should work. Green. So now we get to just make that happen. Um, so, right, that's passing. Cool. Um, set data storage with rooter equals all this jazz. Let's go ahead and start with that. That's gonna bomb because that doesn't exist. Data. I think so we're doing right. Reader return. Well, actually, we can just do pass, right? Because there's no return value from this. Sweet. And now we can set this. Still pass, and more importantly, can you leave that all the way blank? Nope. Should still pass. Okay. But we need the date too, right? Because I want to. I need to be able to test. Basically, I need to be able to test for the date. So in order to do that, I need to be able. I need to have to pass. I need to have to. I need to have to. Um, I'm, I'm gonna pass the date.
Date, date, time. Uh, get date, time from string. Also, Actually, what does that do? It explodes. From time, import GMT time string for time with formats. Python doesn't actually support that as an argument for string time. No reason it works because Python's path information is systems stringify. So I don't know enough about date time. Broke. I fix. Awesome as if I did the thing that I yelled at everybody else about and made that an actual full thing of a bob. Daytime module export the following constants and year, max year. Okay. Daytime date. An idealized, naive date, assuming the growing character always was and always will be in effect. Attributes one thing a year. Yeah, so. Time deltas. I just want like a little quick example. That's Python 2, isn't it? From date time, import date. Print date. Last date. Dot year. What's that gonna do? Attribute year of datetime objects. Daytime import date. Daytime IS from Matt. Daytime date. Daytime is not defined. See? Okay, so there's your date. Now, how do you do today, right? Python get today's date. Come on, Stack Overflow. Oh wow, Stack Overflow taking second place. Additionally, for anyone also looking for a zero padded hour minute second, come on by Gabriel Saves. Gabriel. Date time today. 
So how, I guess the question is, like, I'm just trying to figure out how, what the best way to test this is. So is this... on three. Oh, it's Python two code. Okay. It sucks that that's a Python 2 thing. Um, all right, let's see what these people got. Import date on date today. Does that work? That's Python. How about Python 3? Today's date. Okay, so that works. So it's date today instead of date time today. And it gives you the straight. Wait, did I already have that? I feel like I already had that. So that's today. And then actual today. Test day, right? What's our comma? Oh, can you just do a comma? <laughs> Didn't know that. Oops. It literally just worked. Didn't it? I'm not hallucinating, right? What the hell? Oh, it's different today. Let's try that. Oh, but it didn't work. Oh, because we're printing it. And really what I need to have is actual today that year. How do you print these out? So I know you can do the stringify time or whatever, but I want to see, weren't there, in your max year, date, attributes, year. Do this. Hang on. What does that do? 2019. Okay. So, test date. Equals that. Print. Test date. That year, 
Should work, right? I swear that's what we did earlier. And then date today. Oh, maybe that's what it is. Oh, well, that worked. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So let's write this up a little bit. What would you do? Um, I just wanted to do something, right? Um, date. Oh, can you use that as a word in there? Actually, I don't know that. Wait a minute. Date's just date, right? What was I gonna do? It worked. But if we just call it date, what does that do? Uh, actually, let's do this. All right, what's that gonna do? What's that gonna do? So it's smart enough to know that it's a thing. That's cool. There you go. Okay, that is easy and simple. Um, that's probably pretty obvious, but whatever. I didn't know it. Now I do. I've been trying to open the sprite for three hours. Hour and a half. And we should be able to get year off of both of those, right? Yep. Does that work? Does that work? Does that work? Highly active question. What is going on? Oh. 
That's cool. That doesn't work for UTF-8. I need to do this as well. P and code UTF-8. Decode UTF-8. Thanks for the right direction. Okay. If that requires, it means A does not contain any string objects, rather bytes. Cool. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, pi date testing. See, it needs to have like that or something. Uh, So what we want to do, so we've got the root dir, and then we want to pass the date. Whoops, uh, that's the receiving. We want to do on the passing. Root dir, root down. Date equals, this is going to explode because we don't have... date time running. Right, that's what we want. Import date time date. Yep. Uh, now it's going to explode because I got the wrong number of arguments. Date. Date. Oops, now we're gonna run the wrong thing. Let's try this again. Green. Okay, so now we can actually do the assembly. start with this. Right. That works. Date year. Should be fine, and now if we put the year in. Oops, nope, it worked. I saw red go by. Of course I did, because it's that freaking thing. Um, and just to make sure, whatever. That's gonna explode, because it's the wrong value. Yeah, okay, good, just making sure. 
And now we need... Oh, we need... Da, 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 da. How do we add leading zeros to a thing? Um, it's got S printf, right? But we also need to get the uh, whatever month string pi date. Short month string. Insert date time. Oh, I can just do date time. Whoa, okay. should format this better. Month local abbreviated name. Okay, let's just try to see if we can get that. And also, See if this blows up without actually doing anything with it. No, it passes. Shit, there you go. And then we need month with leading zero. Day of the month is zero padded decimal number. Hello. It's gonna explode because it's going to the wrong place. Yup. Also, I think I might have pulled the wrong one. I did. Day of month. We want month M. There we go. So, all right, let's do this. Archiver. So I need to import date time date like so. Oh, not using date time. It's weird. Uh, comma would be nice. Date time date today. Why is that angry? Okay. Trying to figure out if I want to do logs too. Um, yeah, I kind of want to build a log function, but I'll do that later. Um,
So let's set this for real. I don't think I have just a data directory, do I? I'm thinking about that. I think we're just gonna make one. Data. It's just URL archiver, right? I like it. I don't know why that. I thought I would have needed that for um, something. All this date stuff, but I guess date time, date has it on its own. Cool. Yeah, it's so weird to like run. Like, I want a better kind of methodology for running stuff. Like if you've only got the one machine, like how do you set up like, the, what's the best way to set up config options? I guess you could like pass it a dash dev or like pass, pass, it, pass it a dash prod when you're in prod or whatever. But like, I don't know, it doesn't feel like, I don't know a good solution for that. Or I don't know of a not janky solution for that. I guess would be a better way to say that. Um, whatever. Uh, URL. So that's the data storage directory. And then there's actually the data file name, right? So should, should you actually just assemble all of that at the same time? Yeah, you probably should, right? JSON path, JSON storage path. Let's just JSON path, simple. Um, let's do it the cheat way. Still passing, still passing. I commented that out, right? Yeah, okay. So, Really what we want is quick brown fox 2019, whatever, 2010, 01-jan slash 2010, 01-09 dot JSON. Uh, URLs dot JSON. Quick. Well, that's about quick, right? So that's gonna explode. It's fine. We got it. I don't know how. What's the hotkey for over? Thank you. Now you're gonna work. Apparently closed something. There we go. 
center? Yeah, okay. QA set JSON path explode save JSON set JSON path Seth fixed Ooh, no. What the hell? I was hitting the wrong button. Thank you. So we're going to pass root dir equals all this. Date equals date dot or date twenty ten one nine nine nine. So this is gonna bomb. No tests were found. Come on. I don't get that. Oh, okay. 960 date, state. Okay. Now I understand what was happening. No router. Yep. That song's not doing it for me. Router date. Pass in. So this will blow up. So we can do that. JSON file path, which is really JSON path. That's what we're gonna get to. Okay, so that's cool because we can fix that in a minute. Uh, it's gonna explode because they're not the same. We're gonna fix that real quick. Not there, because we forget that. Self JSON path equals that. We green again, we green again, we're green, okay. I think we need to take that out down here, don't we? We do. I don't like any of the songs right now. Okay, so we're making our JSON path right here. Self JSON path equals. Let's duplicate it. Let's do that. Whoops. Format. And then we're going to get that out of there for a second. And so. We're gonna take one of these and put that right there. What happens? We win. Let's just make sure we're in the right place. We are. So we can do this, which was date. Did I leave the other one in there? Because if I did, I'm just gonna copy it. Yep. Mm. Both of these. 
I will take both of those. So that might work. Yep. That might work. Yep. And that might work. Yep. And this might work. Whoops. Come here. Happy. Lowercase d, uppercase d, lowercase d, uppercase d. Let's try uppercase d. Fail. Test passed. Okay. Cool. So there's our JSON path. Data storage drawer we can get rid of because we're just going to go straight to the path. We're going to cut the path in a minute, but I like I want to build the full thing instead of having to build it twice. So build that, and then we can just do a simple make dirt. Whoop, why is it locked up? This is bad. This happened the other night. It went, it went bye-bye. I don't know what happened. It's not happy. Mouse still moves. What is going on? I'm going to give it a minute because I prefer not to have to slam it closed. I think we're gonna have to reboot. Oh, see, look at that. It keeps doing stuff. Like, I don't know. Discord helper GPU. I don't know what that was. Freaks me out when that happens. Came back that time though, so. I'll leave the activity monitor up there so I can have a fighting chance to look and see what happens if that happens again. It knows what's happening there though, undo. There we go. Uh, right, so now let's commit that. See, this is one where it gets a little tricky because like I need to I need to test making the directory like because if the directory doesn't exist, I want to make it. I need to make it. Um, but like there's no. I mean, you can like mock the file system, um, which I guess I mean. Did it lock off again? Okay, no. I haven't seen the mouse over thing before. Does that do that everywhere? Not for yourself. I guess that makes sense. Is that new? Or have I just never seen it before? <laughs> Neurology research at the moment. That's about it. Yeah, I can imagine. That would be pretty time consuming. Uh, 
Oh, I looked at this the other day. Fake file systems, third parties, the other party is Google. See how to replace file access references for file and for discussions of use. For mocking, you test mock as a standard. Terminology in testing and mocking is inconsistent. Using the test double ton, test double terminology of Gerard Maserios. Maserios? You're asking for a fake, something that behaves like a file system. You can create open delete files, but it isn't actually a file system. In this case, it's a memory. So you don't need to have temporary, you don't have to have test file or temporary directory. In classic mocking, you would just mock out the system calls and Python, Python mock out functions in the OS module. OS RM, but that's much more fiddly. So, all right, I'm, I want to test this. Like, um, oh, I opened more pages than that. Where's the, this one? I want to see that one. Oh, how to replace file access references for module under test. It goes to a giant question, and then it's just a link to the same place. Yeah, but see, but then I'm testing file system stuff, and it's not really what I need to do. Um, so I've got my path to my JSON object, but I need to make, the trick is I need to make that directory if it doesn't exist. And I don't know if I want to like test that. Well, so you could just read. That could just be the read and the write. I actually don't need to look explicitly at the directory because I can just read for the file. And if it's there, cool. And if it's not, just throw an empty object in. And then when I'm writing, I'll just try to write to the directory and if it's not there, I'll burn it out at that point. Yeah, so. All right, so let's actually see, here's where I'm trying to figure out. So I've got, let me let me walk through this for a second and see what I've got. So the steps that I need to do, right? Or we're gonna build this. We're gonna load our JSON data. So, I'll, okay, so step one is I wanna update this, um, which I don't think I've got a test for, which makes sense. Cause I'm just, that would just be testing Python. But I need to I need to set the path. With a root directory. Nope. Data. Uh, 
I thought I did that earlier. I must have, I don't know what I did that. Okay. So reader. And then date. Date today. Right? That all works. Didn't we take out? Oh, I guess so there. It's funny because like you could just burn through this script so easily if you weren't trying to like do all the TDD stuff, but like I'm, I'm interested in doing the TDD stuff. Like this is really good practice because it's not an overly complicated thing so I can wrap my head around it even when I am tired. All right, so we set the JSON path, then we're gonna load the JSON, which is either load JSON from path. Let's do that, right? JSON path equals, and again, I'm not gonna test this cause like, JSON path, right, okay. So this is gonna bomb. And then this is gonna bomb because that file doesn't exist. How did that pass? That doesn't make sense. Quick run, Fox. Well, that's totally coming in from somewhere else, too. Um, we're not running. Why isn't this running this file? Now it runs this file. I don't understand. I guess I should look up here more. I don't know. Or explicitly go up there. But, like, the hotkey's inconsistent. Well, I guess, con does control run automatically do with the last thing that you did? I feel like it doesn't. I feel like sometimes it bounces. I'll keep an eye on that, though. Maybe that's how we can do this. But, like, when I'm in this file... And I hit control shift r I mean, that's literally what I just did. And it ran the other file. And now it ran this one. I don't get that. But that should have failed. Um, Cause there's not a file there. Read JSON. Oh, well, here, so I don't know if this is going to matter. No such file or directory. Okay. Was it already doing that and I just didn't notice it? No. So what the hell is passing in? Oh, because it's... I got gotcha. you. All right, let's get rid of that. See, I thought it should have failed. This is going to fail. Yeah, there's...
Yeah, you should use, so the recommendation is to use try. And you can use try accept. Try. Accept. Well, I guess you don't even need to catch the exception. Right, because it's already set up as an object, but I think you need to have that there. Because you can't just have a empty try, can you? No. One, two, three, four, five, five lines. Sandy would say that's just enough. Or the max, whatever. So that's gonna load it back in. Or that's gonna give us a load. All right, so that loads the JSON file or, or the empty object. So we're gonna set our path. We're gonna load it. Then we're gonna run the process to get all the OSA stuff. Why is that angry? Okay. So that gets a string. Now we need to update. Set object data. For line split, parse, parts, object data. That was down here, right? Update object from OSA. Like I've got two things. Get OSA script load. Load JSON, we can get rid of this. Make markdown object from data v2. Oh yeah, we can fix that in a second and drop the format off of it. Which is weird to have the line with a new line in there to me for some reason, but like that's what it should be. Um, self JSON, oh, save JSON. Hang on to you. Uh, JSON file path, JSON path. That's gonna blow up, that's okay. Um, this one up, this is gonna help me rationalize it a little bit better. Ooh, look at that, that's pretty actually. Set object data from OSA script string. Yep, okay, so you pass this, okay, so you pass the string, that was the difference on this one. For line in the string, you split, grab the lines. And then you split. And then you put it back in. It's fine, you could maybe push that into two things, but it's fine. So, we got the script, and now we're going to set the data from hopefully this, if I'm keeping my naming conventions right. If not, we're going to fix it. Boom. 
Got it. Okay. Yay, naming conventions. Um, so now our object set. Set object data. Set JSON path. We've got save the JSON. We're gonna do a minute. Make markdown from object data. No, we want to do the the full blown thing, right? Set object data. Got it. JSON. JSON. Format build. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Object data equals UA. Object data. What are you going to do? None. None, yeah. All right, so we got object data. Oh, that doesn't, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't uh, print, it doesn't return. That just sets the object. That just makes the data be the thing. See, now this passing back and forth, I'm not as sure about. Like this makes sense because it's coming from outside. But like this is already inside the object. Yeah, that feels weird now to pass it. Okay. All right, we're going to finish up this version and then we'll come back and, and fix that stuff back up. Um, but if we do that, what do we get? Markdown strings. Sweet. <laughs> Which are actually just exactly where we started. Um, but I like the exercise. Like, going through it's good. Uh, Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and and do well. No, we're gonna get the first one. We're gonna get the first one going, and then we'll then we'll work on backing it out if we need to. Um, so the other thing that we need is so we set the JSON path. Set MD file path. Oh, I need to test this one too. Fuck. I'm getting super tired. Tests. 
Whoops, let's do our thing. MD file path. Everybody cool? Yeah. So the quick brown fox. Twenty thirty. Now, how do we want to do these? I don't think I want to put them in one directory. Um, well, in the path, I would want to change the path at some point. So let's just do it there and then date it. are fogging up. Set JSON path. Reader date pass. Actual equals a md file path. Don't need that. It's gonna explode. Still explodey. Because we need it to be that. That with quotes. Whoops. Come here. What are you going to do? Passing. Okay. So now I just got to populate that. All right. Starting to get the hang of it. Yeah, like I keep, I'm going through my head. And I was like, oh, you could do this part different and this part different because of the way that you're going to potentially store these. But like, get the first one out. Uh, date here. That's still going to pass because that's there. Let's see if it's still going to pass with this here. Still passed. or other things. Uh, month, day. Weird. Passing. Okay. 
So set markdown file path. Yeah, I definitely want to clean some of this stuff up, but this this is good because I'm going to get the first one moving and then I can actually look at it and see if I want to go back and change stuff and like remove duplication. But like I I should have made more of this progress earlier. Uh, but I'm still I'm I'm fine with the work that I did kind of tonight working around. Um So that sets the path I'm going to set that at the same time. I like the idea of these things being there. So we set our JSON path, we set our markdown path, we get our JSON, we get the string from the OSA script, we update the object with that, we make our markdown. So now we've got a loaded MD string. Write MD file. And this I'm going to do with the new world order of using the internal variables as themselves. So with open. Yes, yeah, totally makes sense now that I'm looking at it. I just I haven't done enough of the stuff to uh, to get in there as output md file. Nope. I'm just gonna do a tone test here, because I'm going to need to make that directory. It's that MD file path. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, oh, yeah, and there's a year directory in there. That's okay. Make all those. Oh, that got off centered. So if I run this, if I run this, us is not defined. No such file or directory. Open self MD file, group on Fox. Wait a minute. It shouldn't be happening here. Ooh. Root deer, root deer. Funder. Where is our new data directory? Data, URL archiver, MD files, 2020. Oh, missed it. But there's some data in it. file path router self actual how does that 
Empty file path. Why didn't that uh, choke? Should have equaled that. So I gotta switch the test there? Yeah. Oh, test didn't pass. Root there. Yeah, test didn't pass. There you go. Could have sworn I was green, and again, I think that's because that's how that works sometimes. I'm staring right at it. I know I'm staring right at it. Here we go. So we don't want that. We probably want this. Nope. What do we miss? Ah, we need one more. Wait, year. Root deer, year, year. Month, day. Oh, do we just need to do this? Is that what it is? That was it? Okay. All right, we're gonna do a test run here, hopefully. Let's try it manually over here. Now we should see a file here. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, this can overwrite every time. That's cool. It doesn't matter. Um, or in fact, we want it to. Um, aw, hamsters. So now, can you just do this? Does that work? It does. There's our data. Cool, so we're writing out the file now, okay. Yeah, and I'm not, yeah, Google search. So I'm leaving the Google ones. I'm not doing any adjusting on this at all, um, which I think I will. So I'm gonna take out like the localhost stuff. I'll take out work stuff. Um, but I think I'm gonna leave Google searches in and I may even update it a little bit where I take the title or I make it like Google search that for the titles before I do the sorting. Um, oh, and I'm not sorting them. Yeah, yeah, so uh, here, it's add a couple notes. Sort output, um, remove local host and launch pad. Flip the title of searches, so Google search is at the start. Remove work stuff. That's all I can think of right now. Um, oh, uh, update stack overflow to use share links so I can get credit for sharing if people click on them. Um, drop preface, category from Stack Overflow links. I think it's a pretty good shape. Yeah, I like that. Um, I'm in the wrong place. And 
what would it take to save JSON file? We've already got that, right? Save JSON. I just saw it. I oh, know I just saw it. Save JSON. Self JSON path. This might already work. JSON path, right, without encoding. So I'll put it, yeah, that might actually work. Crap, no such file or directory. I have once again hard coded something and left in hard coded set JSON path, aha. Yeah, so step one, start at the start and do router. Like it was passing because it was still catching the hard coded part of it. Let's test everything. One failed, see? Which test is this? one with 2010 in it. I can't figure it out from there. 2010 here. So router. Go brown fox. That's all kinds of messed up. See, why didn't this get caught? Oh, it's frustrating. All right. I think we're in test JSON path. So set JSON path. Test JSON path. What's that gonna do? It'll blow up. Okay, kind of like that. Okay, so part of it is we don't need to send that. Gotcha. Now what? Gotta be nice if those were flush. 2010. So that needs to be a slash. And that needs to be a dash. And then. She's. Uh, Duh. Nope. Oh, we just need one more. Is that what's going on? Passed. Okay. Run them all. Running them all. Okay. Run the thing. Didn't save the JSON. Do I have that commented out? I do. This is probably gonna blow up because I think it's gonna barf on the directory. There we go. There's our JSON data. There's our markdown data, which eventually I'll have this go straight into the file location where it's gonna go and like get a template or whatever. Um, Cause I don't wanna have to mess with it. It's going straight to the blog. So that that's the whole point. We'll just format it straight for that. But the JSONs will keep here. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. So 
sweet. Okay. Um, that is gonna wrap it, I think, because I am really tired. Uh, uh, get add that, whatever. Get. Am I in the right place? Yes. Save output JSON file. So this is actually ready to go, except for making the directories. Once it makes the directories, it's set. You can just keep firing it and it'll go. Oh, I really kind of want to do make dirs now, but I am not going to. Uh, we'll do that tomorrow. Uh, so load JSON data, get, get, save, make, delete all that. Make dart line, ba, 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 da, ba, ba. oh, those are the thing. I want to re-examine those. That was the split. That's doing the title, taking stuff over. That's fine. I'm going to redo all that. Save JSON, print you. Wait, what? What's that doing down there? I just do something funky. Oh, it prints it. Yeah, yeah it, it did print it out. Whatever, it's fine. Uh, don't really need to print it. Uh, don't really need to print anything, right? Zoop. That's awesome. I'm digging it. Digging a lot. I, I still don't have the structure down in my head for how to do um, the class-oriented stuff, but I just, I really just kind of figured how that approach of like, just, hey, just use the internal data. There's no need to actually pass it around, right? Because then you're just going through extra steps. And the reason I was doing that was because of the testing stuff. I was thinking it'd be easier to send something in and then seeing that kind of straight line. But if, and it's a little more easy to do, but it looks like more effort here. So I don't know, actually, I don't know. But I guess, I guess it makes the most sense of like, if you have an object, you, you put the object in a state and then you run a process. And so it takes something in and puts something else out. Um, but I need to do a little more research and figure out kind of what the, and my guess is there's probably religious wars about that. So it's just gonna be one of those pick one and go kind of things. Um, so yeah, so that's that's where we're at. That's what we'll do. Uh, and for now though, that'll be the, uh, the end of the show. Y'all have a good one, be kind, and we'll see you next time.